Hello, this is uh, Ken Roosevelt. We're going to do some Euler diagram practice. Um, Euler, Euler, I can't talk. Euler diagrams are ways of um, demonstrating that arguments are true, uh, devised by Euler, um, when the arguments contain quantifiers. So our pictures look like this for Euler diagrams. If we want to draw all A's are B's, then we put all the A's inside the B's. This is all A's are B's. If we want to draw, um, let's see, no A's are B's, no A's are B's, then, um, then we do draw them as disjoint sets, where this is A and this is B. If I wanted to draw some A's, are B's, or some A is a B, um, I would have to show that at least one A is a B. And so I would just go, there's an A, that's a B. I would say there's at least one element inside the intersection. And if I wanted to say that some A's are not B's, then my picture for that would look like some A, there's an A that is not a B. So that would be some A or some A's. I'll just say some A is not B. And there you go. So those are our four basic pictures. Um, and those are the ones I'm going to try to devise a counterexample um, for any argument that is not valid as I work through these. So first one says, all college courses are fun. So the only picture I can draw, there's no other way I can draw this, is that we have things that are fun and we have uh, college courses in them. So college courses. All right, so that's um, all the college courses are inside the fun. So I've drawn premise one. Premise two says this course is a college course. So I'm going to go this little thing here will represent this course. And you can see this course is inside college courses. So I've drawn the second premise. Now is the conclusion necessarily part of the picture? Is this course fun? Yes it is. And there is no other way to draw it so this is a valid argument. Alright, let's look at the next one. No prime numbers are negative. So let me just draw my universe. And in my universe, we have prime numbers. We have negative numbers. And there is no overlap. The number 7 is not negative. So if it's not negative, it could be, it could be here, it could be here. Um, you and I both know that 7 is a prime number, so the tendency is to want to stick it here. But the fact of the matter is we're not examining where 7 should go. We're examining where does it have to go based on the premises. And the premises only say uh, this, which I drew, and now this, which I'm going to draw. And I'm going to put it out here because I want to show that the argument is not valid. Why? Because no prime number is being negative, and the number 7 not being negative does not necessarily make 7 a prime number. So I've drawn both the premises and you can see the conclusion is not part of my picture. Why? Because not because the final statement is invalid, the final statement is true, but because the way that they're arguing it is not valid. So that's why I put the 7 out here because I want to show that the premises do not necessarily lead to the conclusion. And you can see if I change this to an 8 it might make more sense to you. 8 is not negative, 
Does it have to be prime? No. Okay. Anyways, so this is not a valid argument. Not a valid argument. Again, we're looking at if the logic is valid, not if the conclusion is true. All, right, all squares are rhombi. So we have squares, and all squares are in this thing called rhombi. So I'll just put squares, and here's rhombi. Okay, what about um, all rhombis are parallelograms? So rhombies, all those are in parallelograms. And all parallels, uh, great, are quadrilaterals. So I'm ending up with something like this here. I've drawn this, I've drawn this, I've drawn this. There's no other way of drawing it. So now I'm checking, are the squares quadrilaterals? And yes, they are. The squares are inside the quadrilaterals, so this is valid because there's no way to draw the premises without drawing the conclusion. So there's no counterexample. Right, let's look at the next page. It says, all cats have four legs. Whether that's true or not, that's our premise, and I'm going to draw it like this. Here's cats. Here's things with four legs. Some cats are black. So some cats are black means um, black. Where's my... I lost my pen. I can't see it. All right. There it is. Cats and black have to overlap. And there has to be at least one element in here. So this is black. Things that are black. All right. Is there any way, other way I could have drawn this? Absolutely. I could have also drawn it uh, like this. I could have drawn cats like this. And I could have drawn black like this. And then I could have put one in there to show that there's at least one cat that is also black. Is there another way I could have drawn it? Yes. But uh, most people wouldn't think to draw it this way. You draw four legs. You put cats inside it. And since I'm saying um, some cats are black, I could actually even do this. Uh, I could put black completely inside there. And I could put at least one thing in there. That's that's kind of hard uh, for most people to understand why that's also a possibility. Um, and the reason is... It's kind of hard for most people to understand, though. So I'll leave this picture out. It's even hard to explain. Um, moving here, though. Have I drawn the first premise in both my pictures? Yes, I have. So let me check that off. Have I drawn the second pre premise in both my pictures? Yes, I have. Therefore, some four-legged animals are black. So is that going to be true? Yeah. Because no matter how I look at it, this dot is inside four legs. So even if this is empty out here, or this is empty and this is empty, it doesn't matter. I still have at least one four-legged animal that is black. So this is valid. All right, moving on. Some A is not B. So if I'm going to draw an A, that is not a B. I'm going to put that thing out here, and I'm going to say, well, there's something out here. So there it is. I'll call it little a. All right. Um, all C is B. 
All C is B. So C is inside of B. So let's see. I could put, um, there's three different ways I could draw this. I could put it like this. Okay, C is, um, is B. Let me draw these two again. A, B. I could put um, all C is B. I could put I could put C completely inside there. And the last way I could draw it is I could draw it like this. Here's A, here's B, and here's C out here. And let me just put in A. Okay. Some A is C. Is that necessarily true? Um, no. And the counterexample, the best counterexample is this one right here. Because you can see that A and C don't necessarily have to share anything in common. So this is not valid. And even up here, you could also say, looking at it, it's not valid. Why? Because this little region right here in the overlap could be empty, right? Okay. But this is the best way to draw it because you're clearly showing that C could be completely disjoint from A. All right, moving on. Uh, let's look at number six on here. Or not number six. Wait, am I on number six? just did five, four, five, oh, there's six, it's down here. All right. It says no A is B. No A is B. Here's A. Here's B. They're disjoint. Some C is not A. Some C is not A. So here's a C and this one is not A. Alright, so let's see, some B is C. Well, even how I drew it right there, uh, that's not in the picture, right? C and B do not have to overlap. Um, and even if I drew them overlapping, what's the only place I'm sure it is not empty? The only place I know for sure is not empty is that there is a C that is not A. So that C that is not A could be here or it could be there. Right? But it doesn't have to be here. So I'm not going to draw it there. So there you go. Either one of these two pictures would disprove um, this conclusion. Alright. Of course the better choice, the, the clearer choice, the choice that more people would understand would be this one up top. Because you're showing uh, B and C completely disjoint. Alright. That brings us to number seven. Let me do a time check. That's good. I'll continue on the next video.